On a previous episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy, I showed you how to install this brand new trailer hitch for your Kia Soul. Today, we're going to be installing the trailer hitch wiring harness. It's my Because this car is electronically operated, you're going to want to go ahead and open up your tailgate before doing any of the following. And before you take out those taillights, make sure to do this. The very first step with doing anything with wiring on your car is to go ahead and open your door, locate the hood release latch, go ahead and open your hood, locate your battery, and disconnect your negative battery terminal. Mine happens to be a 12 millimeter. There we go. Now we're all safe to start some electronic work. We will need to remove both the left and right tail lights. There's going to be three Phillips head screws on each side. Go ahead and remove them. You will notice that there is two on an assembly here and one up at the top and it's mirrored on the other side. With all your screws out, you should be able to just kind of grab a hold of it and pull backwards like this and your housing will come free. You'll notice that there's some electronics back here. Go ahead, push in the little clip. You push the little tab down and pull apart and it should separate pretty easily. Go ahead and set your tail light somewhere. It's not gonna get destroyed. Repeat this for the other side. Now we have both tail lights removed. Here you can see everything that comes in the kit. Basically, these connections, the driver side and the passenger side, work as little like Y splitters. So your standard harness clips into here, then comes out this one, which allows you to plug into your taillight assembly. And then it's pulling that information into this box and then sending it down into this receptacle, which is telling your trailer what to do. So this side is basically only for the right turn signal. This has left turn signal, uh, normal running lights and stop brake lights in it. So what we're going to do is plug in both sides, but we need to remove a little bit of the bumper to install it cleanly. You'll see there's a Phillips head screw here and then there's one on the opposite side of the car as well. What I'd like to do is run some of the harness that comes from the driver side over to the passenger side underneath this little bumper skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those two tabs and see how flexible everything is. So I did get a little bit of wiggle room, and with the wiggle room and my little uh, trim panel removal tool, we should be able to sneak behind it, pry it out a little bit, and then sneak our wires in place. Let's go ahead and plug in as much of the harness as we can. That's a very satisfying click. It means I'm doing something right. Now most of this is going to sit up here. Let's go ahead and see what we can get connected on the other side. To make my life a little bit easier, I'm also going to be removing these plastic retainer clips. Uh, like in my previous video, you hold the outside, and then very slowly, with almost no effort, because it's just very thin plastic threads, you can go ahead and back it out until the whole assembly comes out. You will be able to reuse this if you're careful. Uh, that just gets us even more wiggle room, which is really what we're looking for. I could go a step further and remove the upper ones, but we'll see how far we get. Now, as you can see, since we got this plugged in, uh, the only thing left to do is plug in the original taillight receptacle into this side, and then this whole passenger side will be done. But you see we have this green wire that goes all the way across, so that's going to be our right turn signal wire. So that's why we wanted to undo this, so we could pass it all along in here. So what I'm going to do is very carefully follow this wire all the way back to the other side. Once we've got that in place, it should tell us how much extra slack we have here, and then we can put the passenger side tail light back on. To make my life and yours a little bit easier, I'd recommend uh, pulling off this rubber gasket. It goes all the way around the base of the trunk. It's what keeps your good water seal in the back. Uh, you don't want to rip it or anything. You just want to pull it away from its kind of like a flanged receiver. Uh, so as you can see down here, you'll notice that my green wire is tucked pretty close up against there. So what I'm doing is using this painter's stir, like a popsicle stick, uh, anything that's soft. I didn't want to use a flathead screwdriver because it's very thin cable sheathing that we're working with. So you really don't want to puncture through anything, especially when it has to do with electronics. So very simply, I'm just going across, pushing it down underneath this lip, 
uh, taking my time with everything. Again, if you get stressed out, you're going to break something, so don't stress about it. Take your time. Slowly work this all the way across until you reach the other side, and we'll check back in. As you can see, I've got no green wire visible. Everything is run underneath. On the passenger side, I made sure that even if this has to go all the way up, I still have slack. So what I'm gonna do now is reinsert the screws that I removed on this side. Go ahead and push some of this uh, rubber seal back where it goes, and then I'm going to reassemble this tail light. The passenger side should be the simplest thing of this whole project. So what we're gonna do, support the weight of your tail light housing assembly, line up your clip, making sure the male and female side are engaging properly. Snap it in. Make sure that we don't have any wires that are going to get caught or bind on anything. I'm just gonna stuff some of them over there. You will notice they have these little receivers and pins. So you wanna line them up, I'm pretty close, and just push it back in place. There we go. Let's put the hardware back in. Same as before, three screws in total. Uh, just take your time, you don't wanna force anything. Just go till we're a little bit snug. Uh, all the screws are the same size, so you don't have to worry about confusing them in the wrong spot. If you don't have a little electric whizzer like this, I highly recommend one. It's changed my life. As you can see, I've plugged in the driver's side harness, and what I want to make sure is that this box is not going to interfere with anything, along with we need to make sure that this gets a good ground to the car. Now the kit includes a self-tapper screw, so basically you're going to find a spot on here that isn't going to be pushed out of the way or rubbed up against by this harness. So I'm just going to test fit a few times and then I'll find a good location to put that ground wire. For me, my ground wire was best suited right here. So what I did was I followed this peak straight over and basically that's where it's going to sit. Uh, you can sandpaper off the paint if you want a better connection. A lot of metal was coming out of this as I was forcing this in, so we should be fine. Uh, if I do notice a problem with the trailer lights, it's mostly going to be right there. So next, things get a little bit more complicated wiring-wise. Um, if you have any kind of soldering experience or working with cables, this will be a breeze. If this is your first time, then uh, try and follow me as we walk through it very slowly. We have like 20 feet of this cable. As you can see, I already stripped off the end so that the bare copper is showing. We also have this inline fuse. It's a 10 amp. So this is going to end up by the battery on the power side. We're going to crimp a lug onto this end. You'll see that in a minute. We are then going to solder this line to the red wire so that we can run it alongside underneath the rocker panel of the car all the way up to the rear bumper. Once we get to the rear bumper, we need to attach it to the power wire that's here on this box. Now, the way this looks is that there's a bunch of relays in here switching what's sending power, but you need to power the unit itself. If you don't supply 12 volts here, you won't have any working trailer lights. Instead of trying to pull it off from the harness in the back and try and power everything, you'd most likely blow your fuses if you did that. So they supply all that cable so that you can run a brand new hard line all the way to the back guaranteeing 12 volts. The kit does come with butt connectors so that you can crimp everything together, but I'd feel a lot safer soldering it together. This isn't necessary apparently to the kit, but I would feel a lot safer. So I'm going to solder, shrink tube, and electrically tape off all of my connections. I'm not a professional, so please don't be too harsh. Not terrible. Next up, we're going to crimp on our lug. Three, two, one. Magic. Back up at the front of the car, uh, we need to find a suitable place to run this wire, but first I'm going to tie it off at the battery terminal, positive side. So there's a small opening here that I'm going to run up through, and then I'm going to anchor it down with the existing nut that was here. Then we are going to make sure that our black wire is not knotted in any way and go ahead and fish it all the way down through the engine bay, staying along the driver's side rail as much as possible. Uh, again, avoiding any type of fuel lines or any other moving parts that can bind up this wire. You don't want it really touching anything that's not solid metal that you can secure it to. 
Now that we've got our cable fished down through the engine bay, I'm going to go ahead and zip tie the red wire off to some of the pre-existing power wires so that it can't move around at all. I zip tied it underneath of the fuse so that I could still leave a little bit of slack up top. So now we should be able to put our cover back on and we're done up front here for now. So I fished my power cord all the way down to the end of the car, uh, zip tying as I went. I don't want to show you exactly where I picked it off of because I don't want to be reliable for any of your safety issues in the future. But in the rear of the car, you'll see that I grabbed this extra bit of wire and what I did was I tied a weight to it and let it drop through the bumper. See, I just tied it off to this extension because that's going to be my fishing line to bring this power cord back up to the top of the car. So essentially I'm going to take the weight off tie this off to this one and then pull everything back up through the top. Ah, there we go. So we'll go ahead and pull all our slack through. Now that we have our total length needed, we can go ahead and cut off this bit of wire. I can strip, oh, almost dropped it. I can strip this back and we can solder it on just like before. Again, I will shrink tube and tape off the whole connection. and thus completes the soldering for this portion of the job. Next, we need to feed this connector through the bumper assembly so that we can tie it off down at the trailer hitch. You can see this mounting tab here. What you wanna do is fish the connector down on the right side of it, and then fish it over to the left side and drop it through the bumper assembly. Uh, that's probably gonna be your easiest way to do all this. Uh, once we get all the slack through, I'm also going to pass this box down here and then tie it off to something up top so it doesn't constantly want to jostle and destroy itself. You can see our excess harness hanging out from underneath of the bumper and you can also see how I've kind of zip tied it off so that it can't fall any lower. At this point we can go ahead and reinstall the driver's side tail light. Back underneath the car you can see that I've kind of looped my excess harness around the trailer hitch bar itself. So then it just comes out and I've got a generous amount of it hanging here because I need to hook up the trailer and see how long this needs to be. Uh, anything else can be zip tied back. Just make sure you leave yourself with enough excess line. Since we're all done, you can go ahead and put your ground cable back on. Make sure to tighten the nut down completely. And that's basically it. Now there's two ways to go about checking everything you've done. One, plug it back into your trailer and see if you have lights or two, Go ahead and get yourself one of these. I got this at Harbor Freight for like five or six bucks. It's just a test light. You basically tie this end off to ground somewhere and then you plug this into the circuit that is going to be hot or have power. And then the little LED bulb inside will light up red or yellow, whatever your color is. But yeah, go ahead, check everything, make sure it all works. And thank you for watching this episode of $1,000 Car Guy. I hope it was a thorough enough install for you. If you did get some good information out of this, if you'd mind clicking the like button, I'd really appreciate that. If you wanted to buy this kit for yourself, I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Happy trailering.